Hi everyone, welcome to chapter 6, section 5. It says performing uh, function operations. What that means is we're going to go over adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. And so, um, maybe as a concept that sounds strange, right? You can add and subtract functions, and, and yeah, you can. So, um, in these examples, we're going to have a function, you know, f of x, and and then some other second function called g of x and in this table here I give you some examples of what it'll look like when you add or subtract functions or multiply or divide them okay and then after that we are going to identify the domain and evaluate um, a value for each type of function okay so with that being said let's get started I'm gonna add the 3 square root of x and the negative 10 square root of x. So the notation will look like f plus g of x equals 3 square root of x plus negative 10 square root of x. I like to put things in parentheses. Um, these are short functions, so it's like there's not really a whole lot to put in parentheses, but yeah, just use parentheses. Um, what is 3 plus negative 10? That's going to be negative 7. The square root of x would just stay behind. But yeah, that's the answer when you add the two functions together. Okay, so when you're evaluating the sum when x equals 4, you could... Um, I mean, the easiest way is to just plug in 4 here, or you could plug in 4 into your original two functions and then add the two answers together, um, but it's just easier to do it like this. So I'm going to just write negative 7, well, I guess the notation would say f plus g of 4 equals um, negative 7 times the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And that's the second answer. Now, when I identifying the domain, um, I just uh, recommend just graphing it. Okay? So, I'm going to graph negative 7 times the square root of x. And so you can see here that negative 7 times the square root of x, it's going down, but domain is just, is it going, um, you know, left or right? It's starting at 0 and going right forever. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. So for this next example, I'm going to subtract um, g from f. So I'll set it up by writing the whole f function. So I'll write f minus g of x. That's the notation for subtraction of two functions. And I have 3x to the third. I'll put it all in parentheses. Um, minus 2x squared plus 5. And then this is why you need to put it in parentheses because you're minusing this whole function. So I'm minusing x to the third uh, minus 3x squared plus 4x um, minus 2. So don't forget to distribute that negative to everything. Okay. Um, so what is 3x to the third minus x to the third? And that is 2x to the third. What is negative 2x squared? minus a negative 3x squared, that turns into a plus, so negative 2 plus 3 is 1, so plus 1x squared, and then you have no x term, so you have 0 minus 4x, so that's negative 4x, and then you have 5 minus negative 2, that turns into 5 plus 2, that's 7, so my f minus g of x equals negative 2x to the third plus x squared minus 4x plus 7. Okay, so just plug in negative 2 for this one. 
All right, and then, I mean, just type it into the calculator if you want. But to show your work, you'll, you'll write down 2x to the third. Only x is replaced by negative 2, of course. And then plus x squared, so plus negative 2 squared. All right, minus 4x plus 7, minus 4 times negative 2 plus 7. Type that in, and you get 3. All right. And then now let's take a look at the um, domain of it. All right. So I'm just going to graph this. So here is the graph. And you can see it's moving freely left to right. So the domain here is all real numbers. Okay, next we're going to multiply x squared and the square root of x. All right, and then we'll evaluate when x equals 9. So f times g of x is x squared. I mean, simply put, it's x squared times the square root of x. Now, it's easier to understand um, when you write it both, when you write both uh, functions in exponential form. This is x squared times, remember, the square root of x is x to the one-half power. So if I'm doing x squared times x to the one-half, that's like you are adding the exponents together. And 2 plus one-half, well, 2 is 4 over 2, and one-half is one-half. They need to be the same denominator. So, long story short, when you multiply the two functions together, you get x to the 5 halves, okay? So the next thing to do is to just plug in 9, all right? And so, you're doing 9 to the 5 halves. Well, remember, what's the, the bottom number is your root, the square root of 9, is 3. 3 to the 5th power is 243. So if you typed in 9 to the 5 halves power, you get, you'll get 243. Alright, and so now let's just look at the graph of x to the 5 halves. You see here we get this like half, like this parabola that looks like it was cut in half. So it's starting at 0 and then it's going up, but specifically it's going to the right uh, for the domain. So the domain here is x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so with this last example, we're going to divide two functions. We're going to do 6x divided by x to the 3 fourths. And then we'll evaluate when x equals 16. Okay, so my notation will say f over g of x. And that'll be 6x over x to the 3 fourths. So when you're dividing with exponents or, and let's say it doesn't have one, that's an exponent of 1. 6 divided by, there's no coefficient on the bottom, so that's a coefficient of 1 down there. So when you have the coefficients, uh, just divide those like normal. 6 divided by 1 is 6. And then your exponents, you would subtract them. What is 1 minus 3 fourths? Well, 1 is 4 over 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So, or you could just think of it as, if I have $1 and I take away 3 quarters, I'm left with 1 quarter. So, my final answer is 6x to the 1 fourth power. Alright? Now, I just need to plug that in. Uh, plug in 16, I should say. So f over g of 16 equals 6 times 16 to the 1 fourth power. And 16 to the 1 fourth power is 2. And 2 times 6 is 12. And so that's that answer. And now let's just look at the graph of 6x to the 1 fourth. So here you can see that it starts at 0, and it goes up and to the right. So my domain 
is x is greater than or equal to 0. And with that being said, uh, that's going to draw these notes to a close. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.